In today's edition of Expo Connection, get ready to travel green. The Expo will help. Find out from a WHO officer how Shanghai is bolstering the public health sector. And follow us to Wutao Town in the eastern part of the city to see what translation mistakes we can find without writing right to. Shanghai and China change your life change. Welcome to this edition of Expo Connection. I'm Lisa Zhe. As our understanding increases about how we can protect the environment, we commonly use the word green to talk about our life and earth. Green food, green internet, green house, and green transportation. Today we'll talk about green travel. What are some sustainable measures we could take in order to save energy and protect the environment? The answer is easier than you think. Listen to this to hear how Shanghai will help expo travelers travel green. Hey, I'm here. You go up. It's a Sunday afternoon, and these two girls are going shopping together, even though they both have their own cars. We live in the same residential area, and we both have a car, so we always try to carpool. Like today to go shopping, and on work days we just take shift on driving. And this week I gave her a ride to her office, and next week she'll drop me off each day. So we've been actually carpooling like this for more than two years. By doing this, we've saved on gas and parking expenses, and also we know we're helping to protect the air quality and environment by reducing the carbon emission. And that's part of the green travel, isn't it? Dr. Jason Box, one of the world's leading meteorologists, says 14% of global warming is attributed to solar activity, while the remaining 86% is caused by human conduct. With that in mind, Shanghai insiders predict that during the six-month duration of next year's expo, transportation will produce the majority of carbon emissions in the city. Therefore, expo organizers have recently issued green commuting guidelines. And they have asked Zhou Xin, a world-famous movie star, to be the ambassador. Here are some suggestions from their model ambassador. Zhou Xin also wanted to persuade people in the whole Yangtze Delta region, so she traveled with a team of radio station traffic reporters to promote the green guidelines across 15 cities. If you are curious about how to measure carbon emissions, you may surf to the official website for green travel and calculate an individual carbon dioxide emission by using an online calculator. For example, if you take a trip from Shanghai to Nanjing by train, the carbon dioxide produced is 30 kilograms less than by plane, the volume of which is more than 1,000 air balloons of average size. But if you drive a car, you will emit about 5,000 more air balloons of carbon dioxide. Also, in this year's Green Community Guidelines, Expo organizers have promoted a new concept for the city: carbon credits. The Environmental Defense Fund, an American-based non-profit organization and coordinator of the Green Guidelines, operates a website where visitors can buy carbon credits to offset their travel's environmental impact. And this non-profit organization will use the money spent on carbon credits to plant trees in China. 那么在国际上有这样的碳交易市场，你可以通过这个额度卖给那些需要降低自己碳排放的人。如果别人通过某种工作来降低了一吨这个碳排放的话，那么它产生了一吨碳性额度。这一吨额度自己可也可以留着自己使用，也可以通过交易的方式卖给别人，来帮助别人来实现它的低碳。Now let's look at how carbon emission will be kept to the minimum in the Expo Park. Expo organizers will use three kinds of zero-emission vehicles for the Expo's public transportation system. 
innovative buses for large capacity transportation, super capacitor powered vehicles, and super capacitor battery hybrid vehicles. In addition to using these vehicles, Expo organizers have plans for reducing carbon emissions outside the Expo Park. How are they doing that? Here is how. Now I have arrived at one of the two PNR stops in Shanghai. PNR means park and ride. You may park your car here and turn into metro lines. And the fee is only 10 yuan for 80 hours, which is much cheaper than the city's average. And before the expo begins next May, Shanghai will build five more PNR stops so that the people who live in remote areas and from outside of Shanghai can park their cars here, emit less carbon, and ease the downtown traffic. Riding bicycles help us keep healthy and fit. It is also a carbon-free exercise. Expo organizers have a plan for those who live near the Expo Park. And altogether, 150 spots will be set up to lend 5,000 bicycles. And visitors can borrow a bike at one place and then return to another. If every day 3,000 bicycles are used, it would save the same amount of oil that it would otherwise be consumed by 25 buses. In order to encourage more Expo visitors to leave their car parked at home, Shanghai will also set up some bus routes that will take passengers directly to the Expo site. In addition, the city is developing a bus and a ride service so that bus passengers could easily transit to metro lines. Next on Expo Connection, Shanghai's public health sector is preparing for the Expo. Find out from a WHO officer how the city is getting ready. Welcome back to the show. World AIDS Day is observed on December the 1st, and this year's theme is universal access and human rights. What is the current condition of AIDS control in China, and how can the Expo help as a platform to offer better health care? We interviewed Dr. Chris Chunun, Senior Program Management Officer of World Health Organization in Beijing, to find out the answers. Let's listen to what the professionals have to say. I know that in, in August that WHO sent a delegation to Shanghai to check up on, on the preparation work of the Expo. Were you also in the delegation? Yes, of course I was there. So in your personal opinion after that visit, in which field do you think Shanghai need to improve the best? If you go to any European city, you find that uh, most public places are smoke free. People are not uh, allowed to smoke in, in public places. So that's a kind of a global international standard for big cities. And I think this is an area in which Shanghai needs to, needs to do more work and will be very useful, not only for the export, but also for the image of Shanghai as a, as a vibrant uh, and important city. Uh, food safety is a, is a major global concern. It's not only of, of China or Shanghai. Uh, in, in many countries, uh, people uh, are concerned about what they eat. It's a, it's a right to eat uh, healthy food. So these are areas in which uh, uh, I know that there are plans and the uh, local authorities are aware of the need to improve. 2008 Olympics was held in Beijing. Shanghai Expo is somehow different with the Beijing Olympics and the number of the visitors is also very different. Mm -hmm. um, they're estimated like around 70 million people were coming to Shanghai Expo mm -hmm. during yes. the period. So that equals around like 40,000 people daily to the Expo Park. So facing that huge amount of number or people coming to Shanghai to the Expo Park, how do you think we can prepare on the disease control and disease prevention? Yes, there are plans now already, and these plans include uh, having communication with uh, WHO and international agencies about uh, diseases globally mm -hmm. and diseases in China also, uh, strengthening uh, laboratory capacity so that uh, uh, the local uh, medical establishments are in a better position to diagnose and do epidemiological uh, investigations uh, and also strengthening the, the, the capacity of hospitals mm -hmm. to manage, to identify uh, diseases uh, that may be coming from outside and also to, to manage and, and deal with them effectively. So this, these plans are already in place and there is a, a, a massive effort to, to, to train 
uh, staff in medical facilities so that they can cope not only with disease outbreaks but with any incident that may involve uh, mass casualties or, 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 or lots of uh, people uh, requiring attention. The domestic or let's say the local medical service is always you know an issue with concern. So how would you comment on the you know current situation of the local medical service and how do you think that we can prepare when we're facing so many foreign visitors coming to the city? Uh, when I was in Shanghai in August was whether there will be interpretation services for foreigners that came to hospitals etc. <laughs> I think that would be uh, very useful to have this kind of facility for, for foreigners who, who do not speak Chinese. Now uh, I think that in terms of a uh, uh, technical capacity, uh, Shanghai is one of, has one of the best uh, hospital services around, but uh, uh, it is essential that now we uh, increase uh, training and standardize procedures so that in all hospitals and medical establishments there are uh, standard operating procedures in case of emergencies that uh, the treatment that is provided to the population, uh, not only the visitors, but also the local population is of, of high quality, that people have access to these basic services. So uh, we're on the right track here, and the, there are lessons here that we can learn from uh, what happened in Beijing during the Olympics in order to, to have uh, an enhanced capacity to deal with any surge in demand for medical services. Um, I strongly believe that WHO has been always involving with, um, you know, in the preparation of the expo event in the previous expos. So, what do you suggest that China and Shanghai can learn from the experience, you know, in terms of, you know, um, safety, health, food safety, and other issues in the previous preparation of the expo event? We have been working with the with the group that uh, deals with expos in in, in Paris, and. Uh, the idea is to uh, is use this opportunity to have some standards and for instance this question of tobacco control mm -hmm. is one area in which we feel that Shanghai can make the difference. If you look at uh, public health, we only thought of well communicable diseases, mm -hmm. infections, but now during the Olympics for instance we began to think of other things like uh, how about Green Olympics, the environment, how about uh, uh, IT, the uh, high tech Olympics. Mm -hmm. How about the, the question of smoke free Olympics? And this is also happening with expos. You know, the, the public health agenda is expanding and it's not only related to infectious diseases but it's also uh, taking into consideration other factors that affect the public health, that affect the health of, the, of people living in Shanghai. The, uh, again, I like to repeat. The expo is not just for the visitors. Mm -hmm. The expo is the opportunity to also improve Shanghai as a healthy city. Well, thank you very much for all these answers. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Up next on Expo Connection, ride it right. Follow us to Wu Chang in the eastern part of the city to see what translation mistakes we can find. <laughs> Welcome back to Expo Connection. A new commercial hub is bustling in Shanghai. I'm talking about the Wu Jiaochang area, which is fast becoming another Xi Jiahui, with more and more famous department stores, restaurants, and markets opening their doors. This time, our Ride It Ride campaign chose this place to continue our mission to promote the expo. So let's follow our guest host to see if there are any translation mistakes in this public area. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Nick and you're watching Write It Right. Now today we're in Wu Jiaochang and I'm with my friend from the Shanghai University of Finance and Economics. So what's going on you guys? What do you think? The situation is really horse horse tiger tiger. The situation is horse horse tiger tiger. I don't think you get the right English translation. Actually it's a Chinese idiom. Every Chinese knows this means just so so or not so bad. Horse horse tiger tiger is very Chinglish, right? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Cool. So why not we why why don't we go out and find more incorrect English signs? Yeah, let's check out this area. Okay. Alright, come on. So 
So here we are at Wu Jiao Ta. Yeah, right. Right? Right. right. What does it mean? I don't get it at all. Well, actually, on the bus, I think the translation is Wu Jiao Square. It's like Canton Square. According to Chinese, it should be Wu Jiao Ta. That's Wu Jiao Ta. Yeah. Well, I don't think so. We go through the view that um, the Wu Jiao Ta can be translated into Pentagon Square. Yeah. Pentagon Square. Okay, so we all don't know, so let's just ask the teacher from the New Oriental School. Okay. Okay. Right. Hey guys, so welcome to Ride or Ride. I'm Will. Uh, there are two translations for Wu Jiao Chang. Wu Jiao Square and the Pentagonal Square. Actually, Wu Jiao Chang is a square, a shape like a pentagon, but we cannot say that. According to the guidelines for translations in public places, the pain in of Wu Jiao Chang is more than enough. You got it? Hey, what are you taking a picture of, Bill? Okay, look at this one. This sign's really weird. I think maybe two parking lot or something. Uh, you actually don't need to say two parking lot because yeah. of that arrow, you know? You can just say parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Great. Thank you, Nick. Hey, I found another one. Let's Where? Go. Oh. Here. <laughs> export, import. Well, that's ridiculous. Maybe they were thinking that export means goes to go abroad and import to uh, go to go internet. So what do you think it should be then? About entrance and exit? Exactly. Alright, so this is the exit, entrance, exit, entrance, right? Alright, so we've got to find more. Okay. Let's go, let's go. So, Kathy, where are we right now? For well, the setting you are here. The setting you are here? Right. I don't get it. Uh, basically, that means you are here. Oh, I get it. So it's actually just a direct translation, right? Exactly. Okay. So where are we going to go then? Well, why don't we go to the Sunken Plaza? Oh, you mean this place right here? Sunken Plaza entrance? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense to me either, I don't get it. A Sunken Plaza which, um, is basically a plaza which is underground. Oh, okay, underground plaza. Right. Let's go check it out, yeah? Let's go ahead. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, sometimes I see that a uh, road is all in capital letters, which is R O A D. And sometimes I see two letters, which is I and D, also in capital letters. And also I have seen that uh, the R is in capital letter and the D is in small letters. When foreigners say they came to Shanghai because they didn't know much about Chinese. So it's a great problem for them to find their ways. There are too many street signs and in a lot of forms. They will make foreigners confused, I think. So Nick, what is crack? I actually don't know. <laughs> so we're going to ask a teacher from Shanghai New Oriental School. All right. About the abbreviation of road, uh, we have three options here. But I bet uh, capital letter R plus small letter D plus period is the best one. Actually, abbreviation is kind of shortened form of a word or phrase. It is always uh, fixed. Like this one. Junior, G R period equals to junior and expo. EXPO stands for exposition. Look, here is a spelling mistake. Um, it should be vehicle instead of beehive. <laughs> yeah, what is beehive? Uh, I don't think parking spot is, uh, is appropriate here. I, I think parking area is better. So parking spot and parking area, both are actually okay. Yeah. I look at seeing lots of foreigners on the streets uh, riding moped. I don't think they have a parking place in here because you see there's no English on that sign. They don't have bicycle and they don't have moped. Motorcycle. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. But they don't have any kind of translation. Uh -huh. so let's go find more, okay? Alright, All right, you guys, so we actually found a ton of mistakes in this place, right? Yeah. yeah. So many on the road sign. Like Sunken Plaza. Also some uh, re really ridiculous like import and export. Parking without loud. You know, kind of weird. Well, what you guys can do is go into the ICS group at www.kaixin001.com for a chance to win free lessons at the Shanghai New Oriental School. Now, this campaign is going to be going on for the next two months because we're going to be coming the expo here in Shanghai. So, let's review what happened today.
And now it's time to have a weekly roundup of what's happened in the expo world. You will walk through a gigantic color-changing brain cell and then be dazzled by a spiral array of screens at the European Union Belgium Pavilion for the 2010 Shanghai Expo. The screens will show visitors the sights and the sounds of European life as they head up a spiral path. The EU has recently released the details of its expo exhibition as works finished off the pavilion's roof. Intelligent Europe has been chosen as the motto for the exhibition, which aims to create connections across national boundaries to achieve peace and prosperity. We want to present a smiling face of the European Union to the Chinese public. We are waiting here 70 million, perhaps 100 million. The 2010 Shanghai World Expo is now asking for help from a special group of participants, the general public. A special pavilion will be set up at the Expo Park based on your ideas. Expo officials are looking for photos, video clips and other items reflecting the public's efforts to prepare for the World Expo since 1999. The special pavilion will also include a space to show off public suggestions on how to solve some of the challenges facing society. If selected, they will be on display at a special pavilion in the Expo Park in Putong. Organizers are looking for exhibits from the public as well as possible slogans and a logo for the pavilion. The USA National Pavilion organizers and the Procter & Gamble Company announced that PNG has become an official premier sponsor of the USA Pavilion. PNG committed to supporting the Shanghai World Expo by offering both financial support and providing an array of products for the USA Pavilion and the Expo. We continue to have discussions with the Expo organizers on what's the most appropriate and best way to bring those li products to life for Chinese. Right now, the mission to recruit Expo volunteer workers is in full swing. Recently in Shanghai Zhou Middle School, which is affiliated with East China Normal University, 120 students applied for volunteer jobs, including the school's Chinese students and foreign students in the neighboring British International School. It will be a way of giving something back to Shanghai. In fact, this volunteer recruiting rush is part of the Zhou Pu Middle School's Expo campaign. The campaign also includes the writing of a volunteer song, an aerobics performance, a speech contest, a photo show, and an essay competition. The students will inform foreign peers about the 2010 Expo. During these courses, I think my, my skills of communicating and organizing can be improved. More interesting stories. More in depth coverage. You are watching I Am Prince Talking of Norway. Everybody, I'm Chosen Fan. See Shanghai Change, see China Change as the 2010 World Expo arrives in town. Follow Expo Connection as we capture all the excitement. Well, that's all we have for this edition of Expo Connection. I hope you've enjoyed the show. We value your feedback, so please drop us a line via expoconnection at ics.smd.cn or visit our website, icsexpo.bbtv.cn. As usual, we'll now leave you with the latest progress at the Expo site. I'm Lisa Joe. See you at the same time next week. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.